Let's jump into this first story. We got us from TimCast.com exclusive video. James O'Keefe tells Project Veritas staff, I've been removed from CEO and board. I have been stripped of my authority as CEO and removed from the board, contrary to what any public statements may say. He gave, a, a, I think it's like a 45 or around 45 minute speech. And uh, an anonymous source provided this video to us. We uploaded it uh, on YouTube and published it. And uh, James basically lines out, he says, throughout my 13 years here, our mission has evolved from simply being about exposing the truth with help from some hidden cameras to something more transcendental, giving people hope. He says, as I was going through this process, I reflected upon my appreciation for so many of you. What makes us great is that we do this work because we believe we have a passion and a flair for storytelling. He gave a big speech. I recommend you guys listen to the full 45, 45 minute speech. I can't uh, uh, break the whole thing down. Uh, in only a few minutes, but there there are some things I want to point out. The article says, Timcast News has also been provided with board minutes regarding O'Keefe, which included an indefinite suspension without compensation. And the funny thing is, maybe if we, I think um, it gets cut off right here we go. This is an image that we received. Indefinite suspension of Mr. O'Keefe as CEO without compensation. Well, that's strange. Didn't they say before that it was paid time off? Now we can see here in this document, it's not paid time off. There's more. That, uh, in this image, uh, I, think, I think this is, uh, this is, I believe it's something different. Let me pull this one up. Indefinite suspension of Mr. O'Keefe from the board pending the results of the two-dimensional audit. So here's what we have. I mean, so I, I just want to show you. Here's the, the full video you can find at youtube.com slash timcast. I don't know if it was uploaded anywhere else. Uh, I believe the video of James giving the speech was leaked to a bunch of different news outlets. And uh, I, will, I will say this. People are not having it. Project Veritas on Twitter is currently down 133,349. Let's refresh and just see what happens if it's the same. Yeah, 1, 133,585 followers have unfollowed them on Twitter. And we have this statement from Veritas. Take a look at this. This is where it gets. Yeah, I, I get the most offended. Here are a few examples of what has been uncovered so far by PV leadership. Here's the first thing I'll say. James O'Keefe is Project Veritas. He started it. He's the one who paid the prices for it. And I assume most people are donating for him to do what he does because they believe in him. They say $14,000 on a charter flight to meet someone to fix his boat under the guise of meeting with a donor. Sorry, I just literally don't believe it. That just sounds like nonsense. And here's the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. If James didn't do the right thing, in, in, or he tried to by starting a nonprofit, if James just did a private corporation and said, Donate money. It's not tax, tax deductible and I can do whatever I want with it. Nobody would bat an eye at James O'Keefe getting a private jet. Not that I believe that he would mis, m- misuse funds this way. Here, look at this one. $60,000 in losses by putting together dance events such as Project Veritas Experience. That I disagree with. Those are not losses. Those, those are some of the most memorable Project Veritas experience. Exactly. Well, also, doesn't Turning Point USA put on all kinds of dance events stuff for students? Yep. Like, it, it, if nonprofits lost money on one thing but made it up in a different area, that's okay, right? They have to, they're, not everything they're, they're going to do is going to be financially successful, even if ultimately it works out to be in the green. Yeah, these show different dynamics of James and the crew, the people that he's working with, that it's not just some stodgy news organization. I think it enlivened a lot of young people to get involved because he's also a, an artist, mm-hmm. like a dancer. So I think that was fantastic. Uh, this, use of funds. The story I, I was just telling Ian, we did an event in New York with Mines and James O'Keefe was there and there's a there's a side stage area. It's kind of like backstage and there's a group of, a, there's a bunch of people getting ready to go on and I see James and I'm like, James, do a moonwalk and then the whole room breaks aside and everyone stands there as James O'Keefe moonwalks perfectly through the side stage. That kind of thing, in my opinion, I know it maybe it's silly, but that is not a loss when James was doing these videos, he was making a character of Veritas that was something more than just a hidden newsroom that sometimes posts viral clips. It was giving character and personality. This is ridiculous. I'm sorry, it man. It sounds personal because if this was about money and he cost the company a couple hundred thousand dollars, him leaving and all these people leaving, like these are the hardcore donors that are leaving the last mm-hmm. 13, 130,000 people are the people that are going to throw 10 bucks a month at Project Veritas. That's I mean, 1.3 million. The million. donors already filed that cease and desist letter, right? They said, we want our money back if you are getting rid of James. We, are, we gave mm-hmm. because of him. And so, therefore, if that if he's not there, then this is not the organization that we gave money can they, to. Can they get their money back? Is that legal? 
I have heard some organizations do it, other times not. I'm not an expert on it. Uh, it's it's an uncommon for ple- for people to be able to donate money and then take it back. So it but sounds like it would go to court. I assume it sounds personal. It sounds like they some people really didn't like the way James was doing it, and um, because if they want to, or if it was about money, then they made a really stupid fiscal error in removing James because he's a money maker. To me, uh, there's there's two consequences of this that I think kind of even transcend what your own views are of James and and just. To go on the record, I, I think the I think it could be argued Project Veritas is the most and has been under his guidance, the most important information outlet in alternative media in the country. Uh, going back to you know their their origin, their genesis with Acorn and things of that nature, and I find, I find it fascinating is the guy that just wrote about COVID, uh, a definitive book about COVID fascism, that somehow all of these issues somehow immediately have to come to a head after they just did the ultimate sting operation on the demons over at Pfizer. I, the timing of that I find incredibly not coincidental. And I, I and just real quick, James, I, he says this, the only thing that changed was the biggest story mm-hmm. they, in their history with over 50 million views. And he said it's like a 10x increase over their other biggest stories they've done it, so let, let's let's set us but set aside him for a second in your views of him and just look at running an organization and leadership i own my own company i own my own show you got you own your show we have employees we have organizations i've been a part of presidential campaigns corporations here's the reality of of those ecosystems number one um i hope they have lawyered up because by them even claiming these things in disclosures, they have not that, frankly, the Biden feds uh, need much of an invite anyway. They just do it on their own. But they've essentially begged for a full audit of all their books from the feds to come in and say, oh, OK, you guys have disclosed this. Then let's see what else is under there and see if we can just finish your organization off while we are at it. And then number two, though, let's let's play devil's advocate for a second. And let's say there is some merit to maybe he wasn't kind. That was their previous story, right? He wasn't the kindest boss. Now the story is some form of malfeasance. Let's say there's a root of truth to them, just for the sake of devil's argument. You don't take the star quarterback of your team after he just won the friggin' Super Bowl and decide that now's the time you want to have a conversation with him about being a, a kinder, gentler, better teammate and 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 um, being a better steward of the team's resources. He just won the Super Bowl, man. Hand him the trophy, let him take pictures, and celebrate that. There were times before that moment that you could have addressed these things, and there's times later in the offseason when there's not as much eyes, there's not as much pressure, where these kinds of things can be addressed. This is, as you said, Ian, it's either personal or or the, the oversight and leadership and guidance of this board is every bit as culpable, if not more so, of what they claim James is guilty of, even if he's guilty of those things. How come no one stepped in before this? How come no one said, hey, you know what, now given, we're at we're at a next level here, the level of eyes that are on us, the level of pressure that's on us. We've got to make sure we're even more diligent than we ever have been before. No, suddenly out of nowhere, he gets his, he scores his biggest, gets his biggest score in the history of the organization, and now suddenly we want to have a human resources review. That is some really crap happy leadership on behalf of that board, even if they are telling the truth. Yeah, I think those are all great points, especially since uh, Project Veritas, as far as I know, has their nonprofit status in New York. And to get out of New York, you're at the will of the attorney general, which New York has one of the most Mm -hmm. activist, liberal attorney generals, Letitia James, in the country, in my opinion. I mean, it puts them in a terrible place as an organization. If the mission is so important, why would you do that? And to your point, too, like, Every circus needs a ringleader, right. and James O'Keefe is this circus's ringleader. To to kick him off when you are kind of building this huge momentum off of the Pfizer thing seems like it's hard for me not to think that there is something that James was about to do that the board didn't want him to. That's not financial. James should file, um, I don't know, what do you think, LLC? He should immediately create something new, and it should be a for-profit corporation. And people need to understand there, the, the, they, a lot of people think nonprofit means charity and goodness. Mm-hmm. It certainly does not. The, a, lot of, a lot of these companies are just, they, they exist to enrich people. They could be tax havens. You can run, I mean, some of, these, some of these biggest nonprofits that you've heard of will have like a 98% administrative cost ratio. And I think it's like, it might have to be at least 90%. I don't know. They may have changed laws. But this means that when you give a dollar, 90 cents goes in the pocket of the administrative staff. And 10% or less can go to the actual cause. Right. That is, and I've worked for a lot of nonprofits, and I've seen some that do 50 50 
And even that's considered really bad. Some good ones will brag and be like 80% of your donation goes to the actual cause. Mm -hmm. And the administrative costs are a reality of doing business. It just basically means that if they're like, save the dogs, 80 cents goes to actually rehoming a dog and 20 cents is paying the managers to file the paperwork to rehome the dogs. But when you see one of these big nonprofits and, you know, their ratio is like 90% administrative. Yeah, that means n almost none of your money is actually doing any charitable work. So here's what I would say. James should form a new company and it should be a for-profit corporation, which means it won't be tax deductible. But there are enough people who support Project Veritas that he need only say for 10 bucks a month. I was just going to say you that. get yeah. James O'Keefe's premium behind the scenes mm -hmm. director's cut, you know, commentary on our stories and our views. And the news is always free. Mm -hmm. yeah. So not a, a, not too dissimilar from what we do with like, here's the mm -hmm. free show. Yep. I think he'd make even more money and he'd then be able to, without question, he wanted to get a private jet to go get his boat fixed. I got to be honest, James deserves to have a private jet to go get his boat fixed, considering the risks he's taken to his to himself and others. I don't think he actually did that, though. That's ridiculous. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to meet a donor. Better have the company book me a private jet. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah. So. Well, maybe he met with a donor who wanted to donate to Veritas and did, but also t got took his boat taken care of. And the same donor also fixed his boat. Who knows? But this, is, but this is the thing, too. Like, one of the claims they made, I guess, in these internal documents is that he used the money. Do they have that here? Let me, let me see if they have it here. Something about, um, like, a wedding or something. Like, he used the money to pay for his wedding. And it's just like, he's not married, you know? And, and apparently, it was a venue used for a corporate party. They're just taking things and twisting it to accuse them of doing of, of doing things that are wrong. But I think, Steve, I think you, you, you put it perfectly. I would be more willing to believe this if privately a board member hit me up and was like, look, yeah. we're, we're trying to figure this one out. Yep. What should we do to, to boot him from the company abruptly to then publicly accuse him of abusing employees? And that note said some of these signatories of this letter have not witnessed or experienced any abuse. Now they're coming out after uh, the donors refuted that saying, well, well, he was misappropriating funds. It's like, I, okay, you're lying. It's a coup. You're just making stuff yep. up. It's also interesting that, you know, he's off Project Veritas, the nonprofit that we know about, but then he's also off of their uh, political action committee, right? There's the project, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a 501c4, mm -hmm. which they're allowed to participate in political campaigns right as we're going into an election year. And who do you think is like the most dangerous asset to anyone in politics right now? James O'Keefe, because he has such a reputation as an investigative journalist. I mean, to take him out of the organization right now, to me, it, it's deeply uh, suspicious. You know, I care a lot about James' health and like just personally I know him, I like him a lot and I, I'll spend times like being afraid for my friends sometimes and being like, I don't want that person to get hurt. I felt like that about Obama too. I was almost like, please don't, don't, don't go against the deep state, Barack, because they'll kill you. But then what happened was he just didn't go against the deep state and play ball. So like, but I think James is just a guy and the organization that he created is an organization of hundreds of people. I don't know how many people. And they're all, from what I met at Project Veritas, those people are fantastic. And they do incredible work. I think it's like 65 or 65 something. 65 people. Yeah. I mean, they're they're putting their lives, essentially their livelihoods on the line by exposing you know corporate corruption. And, and they can't come back. Once you take this job, it's not like you can go back into the field you're in, right? Um, it's a lot of them are undercover, so they're you don't know who they are. Those mm -hmm. people hopefully can assimilate back in. But, you know, if you're going to put your face on the on the the movement. But like, I, I think it's important not to put all the weight of this entire thing on James. Like he's part of it and he will continue to be part of the movement, whether or not it's with this company or another company. Uh, but I think it's the time to take the heat off James is now like Veritas will continue and it'll continue to expose corruption. And if they are corrupt, they'll get exposed. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.